So I thought it would be useful to look at two aspects of solving quasi-linear PDE and that's how to check your solution and then how to make use of the Cauchy data to find a particular solution. So let's imagine that we're given a question uh, like this one here. So this is a PDE, so this is a quasi-linear PDE. So it's quasi-linear because I've got these U's here in front of the derivatives. So this is a quasi-linear PDE. Um, and we're asked to find the solution in particular. So we're, we're asked to find the solution that contains the following curve. So we've got two examples here. So one is U of X and 0 equals X. And the second one is uh, U of X and 0 equals X squared. So we look at each of those in turn. So in the lectures, we actually solved, or we found the general solution of this PDE. So I'm not going to re -go, I'm not going to go through how to do that here, but this is a solution we found in, in, the, in the blue box. So u is equal to some arbitrary function w, that's this guy, um, an arbitrary function of y plus u divided by x plus u. And because this is a quasi-linear PDE, this uh, general solution is in implicit form. So we've got u on both the left and the right hand side. Okay. So say we found this solution, but we're not 100% sure that we've, that we've got things correct. So what we should be able to do is we should be able to take this general solution and place it in the original PDE and show that it satisfies that equation. So I thought I'd just run through uh, how that works for this example here. It's a little bit messy, but it does work out. So the first thing we need to do is to construct the derivatives. So we've got du by dx to start off with. Um, so this just works by chain rule. So we take the derivative of the, the function w. I'm not going to write out its argument. And then we differentiate its argument. So this is kind of a product rule thing. So I've got the derivative of the top. And I'll leave the bottom alone. And then I'm going to differentiate the bottom. So that gives me a minus uh, x plus u all squared. I'm leaving the top alone. And then I get the derivative of the bottom with respect to x, which is 1 plus du by dx. Now, because I know where I'm going with this, I'm going to tidy this up in a particular way. So I've got w dashed. And the first thing I'm going to do is take out x plus u all squared times this lot, and then I'm going to collect together the terms with the derivative. So I've got, <coughs> excuse me, uh, du by dx, and this then multiplies. So from the first term, I get x plus u, and then from the second term, so that maybe I'll cross these out as I go. So that was this first term, and then from the second term, which is this one here. So that's going to give me minus y minus u. And then the bit left over is from this 1 here. So that's uh, minus y plus u. Keep in its brackets. And then you see there's some cancellation in here. So this is w dashed over x plus u all squared times ux x minus y those u's cancel minus y minus u okay so that's my uh, derivative of u with respect to x then I can look at the other guy so maybe I won't uh, write out all of these steps. That's not very interesting. So what do I get? Well, I'm writing it in the same form. So I've got w dashed over x plus u all squared times 
u y x minus y plus x plus u. So those are my two derivatives. Then we're going to uh, we'll start a new page. Uh, so sub these into PDE. Maybe I'll write out the PDE again just so we know what we're talking about. I've got x plus u du by dx plus uh, y plus u times du by dy. And this should be equal to zero if we've done everything correctly. Once we sub our um, derivatives in. So we're going to take the expressions we've just found for du by dx and du by dy and pop them in here. And what we get, so if you remember we took out an overall factor of w dashed plus x plus u all squared. And then what's left is going to come in some big brackets. So I've got x minus y times x plus u du by dx. So look, this bit here is this. And then the other two terms, and then these two, we just found um, when we calculated du by dx. Then I have uh, u plus x, minus u plus x, times y plus u. So again, this is what's come in here. And then the red bit here was from the du by dx. And then we get the second term, which is plus x minus y y plus u, u by dy, plus y plus u, x plus u. So again, I'll just show you where bits come from. So this was, this blue bit has come here and also to here. And this and this and this bit from the expression for du by dy that we that we had before. So then you can see, so I'm just going to scroll all over the top of this. So this bit is the same as this bit, but with a different sign. So these will cancel. And what I'm left with, so each of these has got a common factor x minus y. And that leaves me then with x plus u times du by dx plus y plus u du by dy. And then we see that this thing in square brackets here, so this is our original PDE, and so we know that this is equal to zero, which means of course that the whole thing is zero. So u equals w of y plus u divided by x plus u. So is the general solution. Okay, so the idea is that if we've done the general solution properly, we should be able to stick it back in the PDE and, and show that, if, that it really is a solution. And that's how it works in this uh, quasi-linear case. 
And what's tricky here is that you've got an implicit, so your general solution is in, in an implicit form. Uh, so that just make, it means you have to work a little bit harder than, than you might have hoped. Okay, so that was the first part of what I wanted to talk about. The second part is looking at the particular solution. Or the particular solutions, because we've got two cases here. Particular solutions. So the first one, we are told that we would like to match up with the following uh, curve u of x and naught equals x. So the first thing to do when you're given uh, an initial condition like this is to turn it into something in a parametric form. Parametric form. So here the simplest way to do that is to define a new variable s and say that x is equal to s so we're told that y equals 0 on this curve, and so u is equal to s, so u, uh, u is equal to x, so therefore u is also equal to s. Okay, so let's now sub this into so our general solution that we've been talking about. I'll write it out. So let's sub this in. So we've got so u equals s. So this is s here. And I'm going to switch black to black for all of the other bits. So I've got u equals s. So this is u equals s. And this is an s here. Then I've got, so y equals 0, so this is a 0 here, and then x is also equal to s, so that's here. So I'm just doing the colors so you can see where things have come from. Okay, so then I can just top this up, and we have that s equals w of, and here I've got s divided by 2s, so this is w of one half. And if you recall back to the lectures, so this is a contradiction. Contradiction. So on the right hand side we've just got a number, whereas on the left hand side we've got a function of s. So that, that, that can't work. So this essentially fails. So there's no, so the uh, given curve so this given curve here, so it doesn't lie on our solution surface. Okay, so this procedure of matching up with the with this curve fails. So that's the sort of nasty case you have to watch out for. So what was case two? Um, so here we said. So I'll write this straight away in parametric form. So x was equal to s, y was equal to 0 again, but this time u was equal to s squared. So if we pop this into our um, general solution, so we have s squared on the left hand side, is this unknown function 0 plus s squared, so that's y plus u, and in the denominator we have x plus u, so that's s plus s squared. So this is equal to s over 1 plus s. Okay, so this, this looks okay, right? So we've got a function of s on the right-hand side and a function of s on the left-hand side. So there's no contradiction here. So we should be able to find s. So the trick is here what we do is we take whatever is the argument of our unknown function and introduce a new dummy variable so dummy variable which we're calling r because really I want uh, to know what this function is with a simple argument so w of r 
So we've said that R equals S over 1 plus S. So I can rearrange that to work out what S is in terms of R. And what I get is S equals R over 1 minus R. So then we sub that back into this equation with the star. And I get W. So whatever's inside here, by definition, I've called R equals. And then we have to look at the other side of the equation, which is S squared. But I've just said that S is R divided by 1 minus R. So on this side, I get R over 1 minus R all squared, because I have S squared. So this then fixes my uh, unknown function. And if I was to go, go back to write out the particular solution, so I would go back to so this form here, say, and then instead of having an arbitrary function, I'd now have this known function and I have to stick in that argument in here. It would be messy, and I'm not going to bother writing that out. But that's the idea. So um, two cases. In the first case, we encountered a contradiction. So that's this guy. On the right-hand side, I just have a number. On the left-hand side, I have um, a function of s. So that doesn't make any sense at all. So, so that doesn't work, that procedure. So the prescribed curve doesn't lie on the solution surface. In the second example, everything works out fine, and I obtain an explicit expression for this unknown function, and so the given curve does lie on the solution surface of my PDE. And that is that.